Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to focus on the S&P 500 today and then take a look at a couple of our indicators. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at the side by side view, the industrials, the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. And then I want to later on check on a couple of indicators and then look at the Magnificent Seven and my current take on Tesla. You know, no extreme sentiment is the title of the video. Well, we're going to I'm going to I'm going to talk about that. We're just not seeing it. And the market just keeps moving up and to the right. OK, so let's start off here with an ETF dashboard. So this is what I share with my members every Saturday morning. And this last week, we only had five sectors up, 11 sectors down and a little bit uh, almost 50, 100 percent different from the previous week. And this is one of the weaker weeks that we've had in the last two months or so. Uh, for the year, though, there are still 13 sectors positive and three negative. Energy was the strongest mover this last week, up 3.8 percent. Semiconductors got hit down 3.2. But look at what they've done since the beginning of the year so far. They are well over double the next uh, strongest sector, which is Home builders at 10%, up 10% on the year. Telecom is the leader to the downside. When I look at the index ETFs, the IYT, which is transportation average, the, I use that because they don't have a good ETF for the Dow transports. It was down 2.3%, edging out the Russell 2000. But everything was in the red this last week. But for the year, everything is still positive. With the S&P 500, the SPY up 7.3 percent on the year. OK, so let's take a look at the side by side here. Weekly views, the industrials were down 7.9 points this last week. So, you know, just kind of a little bit of a sideways kind of push in here, a little volatility up and down, a little more compression on the S&P 500 down 6.6 .6 on the week. Uh, but definitely a little doji candle is kind of indecisive and more of almost like a pause catching its breath after this kind of move. Now, the NASDAQ 100 down 210 points down for the second week in a row. We had some divergence that was showing up in here. It's not a huge type of divergence. It was just a divergence over like three candles. Uh, but we have gotten a little bit of a corrective move, not much. No divergence showing up really over here that, you know, it depends on which indicator you're using. And if you look at the RSI, and I use a 10 bar RSI, uh, you know, I'm just not seeing it on the S&P or the Dow Industrials. When we look at the side by side of the industrials to the transports, transports had a weak, uh, weak uh, pullback here, a pretty strong pullback down. Not a weak pullback, strong pullback. I, I, I hesitate to say a weak week. I've got to, you know, it's it just sounds a little silly to keep saying it's a weak week. <laughs> OK, down 220 points here for the last week. And the interesting thing, though, yeah, we closed below the trading of the prior two weeks. But these three weeks are still within the trading range of the week of February 18th. So for all intents and purposes, we're just kind of chopping around, going sideways within that range of the middle of February. So we'll see what happens in here, if this kind of can resolve itself and really kind of play catch up with the Dow Industrials, which you know, has had a pretty strong little move. OK, let's go back and take a look at the S&P 500 now. So here I've got the daily chart. Here's that weekly chart we just looked at. So the, on Friday, the S&P was down 33.39. Now, since this kind of a sideways corrective type move, which I label uh, a B wave in here, not much of a pullback, but we haven't got much of a pullback since October. But since this move right here that kind of bottomed the first week of January, we've really had what? One, two, three, four, five days, five times that have pulled back and closed below the 10 day moving average. And a couple of times we had two days in a row or actually one time we did. 
We just never got any follow through to the downside. Are we going to get follow through now? I mean, we'll watch and see. That's going to be the key. I mean, we just we keep having this divergence show up, but we don't get any kind of breakdown. So right now, I'm looking at this from an LA wave picture and I say, well, you know, here's the the on on the weekly view. I think that we could be still in a big ABC and yes, a B wave and a large expanded flat goes beyond the beginning of the A wave. So yes, this could legitimately be happening. And I've talked about this, but if we start stretching above 138.2% of A, I'm going to be switching to the alternate account and I'll talk about that in a second. So given that we're looking at this B wave, uh, which needs to be a three wave move in here, Okay, or the Y needs to be a three way a, a zigzag is the way it's playing out it needs to be a corrective pattern. Okay, uh, so right now this is definitely playing out as a zigzag when you look at this right here. And so my best take on the C wave is that we had an impulsive move that peaked here on February 12th. And then a quick little abbreviated, you know, wave two pullback got into the prior fourth wave. And now it looks like we're trying to take off and flush out a third wave, but it's gotten kind of messy the last couple of weeks. So we'll see what this what this uh, how it resolves. But I continue to look for this to to uh, keep pushing up and to the right. I mean, we'll see. We may be getting more of a correction right now, uh, but because it's it's really run and all the, the divergence that's showing up, but I can't move to that until the price action reflects it. And right now it just isn't doing that. Now, I'll tell you the alternate count that I've got is this, the bull, a strong bullish scenario that says, hey, we're in a very, very strong fifth primary wave up here, one, two, and that we're in a third intermediate wave that's really just going to keep going. And given what it's doing, it does give you pause. Given the way this is acting, it really does give you pause. But I'm not switching to this until we get above that 138.2 level. Now, you know, by Elliott Rave rules, that doesn't invalidate a large flat you know, irregular correction. It doesn't invalidate it. But most of the time, the B wave is going to be, you know, around 138% max. But yeah, it can go bigger. But if we get above this level, I'm moving to the alternate count just because of the way this market is acting. So, you know, it's not, I know it's frustrating because it's not super definitive. But guess what? Stock market is not super definitive. I mean, it just you got to play the the probabilities. You got to sit back and say, given what it's doing, given how it's acting, here's what it seems to be playing out. Here's a path forward. Does it continue to play along that plan or not? OK, so that and, and let's take. So this is the SPX and it's really the same picture on the spy. And this is how I've got it laid out on the spy. You know, it's continuing to move higher in here. And yeah, we could substantially get up and, you know, push above that 138 level. But uh, same exact count that we've got on the SPY and same thing, same picture. OK, let's take a look at uh, some of the indicators we've got. So let's start off here with the McClellan oscillator. Now, this has really, I mean, here, look at this frustration and activity right in here. All we've been doing is bouncing around in the neutral zone. This is a zero line, minus 200, plus 200. Extremely overvalued, extremely undervalued in terms of, uh, you know, stretching the rubber band, you know, ex extreme selling and extreme buying. All we've been doing is bouncing around the neutral zone. And where are we sitting? Minus 41. Okay. So the market, you know, this this indicator is basically saying the market is neutral right now. OK, and it's amazing to see that given what the market's been doing with this continuous push up and to the right. Let's take a look at the high yield bond fund. 
Now this is interesting. I've got this pattern. I think I talked about this in a video before. Okay, we're down five cents on Friday, down 33 cents on the week. But boy, this really continues to catch my eye in here on the weekly view. This looks like a bull flag. I mean, it looks like a flagpole and a flag. Now we haven't broken out of this pattern yet, but we've been in this for nine weeks. And, you know, so again, you know, you see all the, the choppiness going around zero and everything like that. And uh, like on the McClellan oscillator, and then you see this, you're like, yeah, OK, this is going to resolve one way or the other. Is it going to go this way or is it going to kind of fail and come back down right now? It looks like it wants to go higher, but it hasn't it hasn't broken out yet. OK, the other thing I wanted to show you is the put to call ratio. OK, this is the equity put to call uh, ratio coming out of the Chicago Board of Options Exchange on equities only, not indices. All right. So this is the reading. This is the 10 day move, 10 day average. So we're sitting at a 10 day average of 65 puts for every 100 calls. OK, not an extreme reading. There's nothing there's I mean, it's just not extreme call buying, not extreme put buying. And by extreme, I'm talking about, you know, look at this, you know, back in October down at the bottom down here, we got extreme. And then in terms of at the other end, kind of like if you're looking for a top in July of last year, look how extreme it started to get in terms of how low the put buying was per 100, uh, you know, uh, 100 calls. OK. 49 puts for every 100 calls on a 10 day moving average. OK, so and and this isn't even the most extreme, but it's extreme relative to recent history back there in July. OK, so now we come back down to what we got here. Nothing. So that's why I'm just kind of saying, well, keep an eye on the, on the price action. But um, right now it seems like the trend is your friend. OK, let's take a look at the Magnificent Seven just real quick. OK, so right there's three of these that are in what I would say downtrends. Apple, pretty strong downtrend. Tesla, pretty strong downtrend. Google or Alphabet, it's kind of flipped in and out, but it looks like it may be starting. It, of course, it's rallied recently last week, week and a half, but it may be trying to flip over. But you know, here's NVIDIA, of course, everybody's watching that and knowing it's going sky high. Meta, Microsoft, very strong uptrends and Amazon up and to the right. And they just keep trending. So four out of the seven are still in pretty strong uptrends. Three, two are in pretty strong downtrends and one's kind of in the middle alphabet, I would say, just kind of chopping around you know, sideways. So let's take a look at Tesla. OK, this is a weekly view of Tesla. This is all the data I have. I believe that the first cycle wave in Tesla peaked right here in October of 21. And that here are the five primary waves. I think this third primary wave, which had a very strong third uh, you know, intermediate wave within it, big fourth wave sideways choppiness, you know, and then we we moved up and we peaked here in September of 2017, pull back and then a strong fifth wave up in here. So now what's going on? I still think that cycle wave two is not done yet in terms of a pullback. So when I look at this, I say, well, you know, it looks like it has started a, a zigzag type pattern, a five wave. Uh, leading diagonal it looks like an expanding. Well, no, do I have? Let's see. Now I've got this. Oh, this is the one that was an expanding leading diagonal right here on intermediate wave one. Then we've got an impulsive wave for A. So we've got five, three, expecting a five for C. Now this C wave again can morph into either impulse wave or an ending diagonal pattern. If it's an ending diagonal, it, all the waves have to be zigzags. So that's what we'll keep an eye on. But right now, my first target would be down here where uh, 100, about 125, 126 points 
or so. Okay, if it does, you know, C versus A is what I'm looking at the relationship C versus A 61.8% of A. If C equals A, then we're talking about down here around 73, 74 points. So we'll see what we get. We'll see how this fleshes out. But this is the bigger pattern I think is going on with Tesla right now. Okay, that's it for this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.